Now it can be said that the world has gone bad. Only if people understand the Buddha Dharma can the evil age be turned back. If people don't understand the Buddha Dharma, then I am afraid this world will arrive at the time when it will be destroyed. The Christians talk about Judgment Day, the last day. If the Buddha Dharma is translated into English, if everyone understands the Buddha Dharma, if everyone knows better than to be lazy, and if people come forward to cultivate the way with open hearts and minds, then the last day will be very far away in the future. It will be hard to say how many great ages away. Basically, there isn't any last day. Why? Because the turning of the great Dharma wheel of the Buddha Dharma will even pull in the sun, which then will be unable to set on the last day. There won't be any final day. All such matters are living. They are not fixed, certain, and dead. Don't think that what is called the last day is the last day, for then there will be in fact be a final day now which is more probable that there will be a final day or won't be one if everyone studies the buddha dharma then the day of, the, of destruction won't come it's all very alive so don't see it as fixed and dead for instance from time to time, people have spread the rumor that there is going to be an earthquake in San Francisco that will cause it to fall into the sea. For several years now, people have been talking about this, and a lot of wealthy people who are afraid of dying have moved away. I spoke about this last year too, and at that time, one of my disciples in San Francisco sent another disciple to Seattle, a letter saying that I couldn't go to Seattle because if I did, San Francisco would fall into the sea. I was unable to buy a plane ticket, and even though they were going to give me a plane ticket, I couldn't go. At that time, I told everyone, if you really study the Buddha Dharma, San Francisco won't be allowed to move because I haven't lived here long enough. Why did I say that? Well, this year I said to everyone, relax. All you have to do is recite the Surakama Mantra and the study, study the Buddha Dharma with a sincere mind and I will guarantee that San Francisco won't budge. I said that. Why hasn't San Francisco moved up till now? Because there are some people who have changed a little. Everybody recites the Surakama Mantra and studies the Buddha Dharma with a very sincere mind. So the gods, dragons and the rest of the Eightfold Division of Good Gods and Ghosts are here to protect our Bodhimanda Way Place, platform or seat of enlightenment. Chinese Tao Chang our place of cultivation to see that there are no disruptions. The meaning is the same as for the last day. If it is possible for the last day not to be the last day, it is even more possible that San Francisco won't move. Even if it wants to, it can't find some other suitable place to rent, and it already has such a good place that isn't moving. Explanation of the name of the text Sutra When Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva Verse Reversing the light to shine within Avalokiteshvara enlightens all the sentient beings Thus he is a Bodhisattva His mind is thus, thus unmoving A superior one appears With total understanding of the, the ever shining his host and master. The six types of psychic powers are an ordinary matter and even less than can the winds and rains of the, the eight directions eight directions cause alarm. He rolls it up and secretly hides it away and lets it go to fill the entire world. Commentary The name Avalokiteshvara is Sanskrit. In Chinese, 
it is rendered quantity contemplating is to be at ease is to be happy about everything and to be without worries or obstacles to be unimpeded is to contemplate ease if you are impeded then you are not contemplating ease reversing the light to shine within is contemplating ease if you don't reverse the light to shine within you are not contemplating is what is meant by reversing the light to shine within regardless of what the situation is is a mining yourself if someone has wronged you you should think to yourself basically I was wrong if you say when people don't act properly toward me I don't look to see whether I'm right myself I just smash them right away smash their heads in so that blood flows then you haven't won a victory but have only shown your complete lack of principles and wisdom to reverse the light to shine within is to have principles and wisdom reverse the light and contemplate whether or not you are at ease i will explain the two characters to tie which together means ease the two is oneself and the tie is where one is and I say it word for word if you write here are you right here Tai or aren't you in other words do you have false thoughts or not if one has false thoughts then one two is not right here it's very simple to reverse the light to shine within is simply to see whether you have false thoughts if you have false thoughts then you aren't at ease if you don't have false thoughts, then you are at ease. That's how wonderful it is. Avalokiteshvara enlightens all the sentient beings. Thus, he is a bodhisattva. What is a bodhisattva? A bodhisattva is somebody who wants to enlighten sentient beings. The Chinese word for enlighten is chao. To make people understand. It isn't the chao which means to stir up trouble add the eleventh hand element hand to the character chow meaning to enlighten enlighten it becomes another chow it turns into a lot of trouble the stirring up trouble chow is not to enlighten sentient beings but to make them stupid and try to turn what is good in their lives into what is evil but here in the verse Chao means to bring understanding to all sentient beings. What is meant by sentient? Be careful not to misunderstand the text here by hastily assuming that the word sentient, Yu Ching, means the emotional of Ching I. It as the Chinese characters can be interpreted in another context. No, to enlighten sentient beings is to empty yourself of love you must see love as empty that is to be a bodhisattva therefore the verse says his mind is thus thus unmoving a superior one appears thus thus unmoving means there is no dharma that is not thus all dharmas are thus this dharma and all afflictions and troubles have disappeared to be unmoved is to have the power of samadhi. Doesn't the Lotus Sutra say, His mind is at peace? To be at peace in this way is to be very happy and to possess great tranquility. With total understanding of the ever shining, his host and master. You should have the total understanding of the ever shining prana wisdom. If you don't understand, then you do not shine. If you are not shining, then you don't understand. Therefore, you should understand and then understand even more. Shine and shine even more. You should shine brightly in your total comprehension and totally comprehend in your shining brightness that is understanding. You should be very clear. What's being very clear? Being very clear is not being muddled and stupid. If you understand that to do a certain thing is wrong, 
and you still go ahead and do it that is killing stupidity on top of stupidity you are doubly stupid that is because you are not equal to being host being host and master is being able to be in control i am master and i am host someone says I tell everyone else to do anything I think they should be doing. I am not controlled by other people, but I myself control others. I won't do anything, so I just tell people to help me do my work, but I won't help them do theirs. No, being host and master is not like that. To be host and master is to be free of confusion and never do anything confused. To be in control at all times is to have genuine wisdom. You are without prejudice, and you don't act on the basis of having knowledge and views. You don't take drugs or do anything improper or disruptive. If you act improperly, then you get a chance to take a look at stupidity. Six types of psychic powers are an ordinary matter. If you can be in control, you will naturally have the six psychic powers. They are one, the psychic power of the heavenly eye; two, the psychic power of the heavenly ear; three, the psychic power with regard to past lives; four, the psychic power with regard to the minds of others; five, the spiritually based psychic powers; and six, the psychic power. Of the extinction of outflows, if you do not have the six types of psychic power, it is because you are not in control. Because you are influenced by all the external circumstances you find yourself in, you are influenced by people and have no influence yourself to affect the situations that confront you. When you are able to turn situations around, then no matter what comes, you will be unmoved. Don't be bold and say that you already know how, because to be unmoved means that even in a dream you are not affected by states of consciousness. That is to be host and master. If you are not affected by internal or external states, and if you have real wisdom and the six psychic powers, then you have a very ordinary talent working for you. Nothing spectacular, just something very ordinary, and even less than the winds and rains of the eight directions cause alarm. The winds and rains of the eight directions refers to the last two lines of a famous poem by Su Tung Po, one thousand thirty-seven. Ten, o one. Ten thirty-seven, eleven o one. I bow to the God among gods. His hair light illuminates the world. Unmoved when the eight winds blow, upright I sit in a purple gold lotus. Su Tung Po sent the poem to the great master Fu Yin, ten eleven ten eighty six, and the master's reply was towards fart fart. As soon as Su Tung Po saw Great Master Fu Yin's criticism, he couldn't get it out of his mind, and he rushed across the Yangtze. He lived on the south side of the river, and Great Master Fu Yin lived on the north side to find the master and scold him. He wanted to tell the master that he had written an enlightened poem. So how could the master possibly have replied, "Fart"? But, in fact, the great master Fu Yin criticized him. Not only did Su Tung Po fart, he blazed forth and wanted to scourge Fu Yin to death. So he rushed across the river and burst into the master quarters without ceremony and shouted, "How could you possibly go to someone and slander him that way by writing fart, fart?" Fu Yin replied, "Who I was slandering? You said you were unmoved by the winds of the eight directions, but just by letting two small farts, I've blown you all the way across the Jiangsu. And did you still say that the winds of the eight directions don't move you? You don't have to talk about eight winds. 
just to make two fats bounce you all the way up here. Then Su Tung Po thought, "That's right." I said that I'm unmoved by the eight winds, but two words have been enough to make me burn with anger. Realizing that he still didn't have what it takes, he bowed to the master and sought repentance. What are the winds of the eight directions? One prays, for example, Upasaka, Sanskrit term for a Buddhist layman. You are really a good person. You really understand the Buddha Dharma, and your wisdom really shines. Furthermore, your genu genius is unlimited, and your eloquence unobstructed. To ridicule, for instance, is the scientific age now. And you study Buddhism. Why do you study that old superstitious rubbish? Really ridiculous ridicule. And yet you think you're right. How can I study Buddhism now in the scientific age? Cause and effect. Know me and know you. How can such metaphysical theories be worth anything in the age of science? I am I, and people are people. You become confused. And are moved by the blowing of the wind. Three suffering. The wind of suffering makes you suffer. To be unmoved while seriously performing ascetic practices is an example of being unmoved by the wind of suffering. Four happiness. To eat well, to wear good clothes, to have a good place to live, and to be especially happy all day long. Thinking. This certainly is good. Is to be moved by this wind. Five benefit. You think all I do is go to a lot of trouble cultivating. I don't even have any false thoughts. Consequently, people come to me and make an offering of a million dollars to build a temple, and they are very, very happy. That is to be moved by the wind of benefit. Six destruction. Perhaps the wind of benefit blew yesterday, but tomorrow people may come and ruin everything. They tell people that monk is no good. Don't believe in him. He will do anything. Believe in me instead. Seven gain, eight loss. Those are the eight winds. The verse says, and even less can the winds and rains of the eight directions cause alarm. It means that the eight winds blow, but I don't move. He rolls it up and secretly hides it away. When you close this sutra, you should store it in a good place, not a place that indicates your lack of respect. You should respect it and let it go to fill the entire world. When you open it, the wisdom of prana fills the sixfold union. That is, north, south, east, west. Above and below, which together represent the world, this prana dharma door is very wonderful. Prana and emptiness, sutra. When Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva was practicing the profound prana paramita, verse. Practice the way, cultivate yourself, and do not research outside. The prana of your nature is a deep and secret cause. White billows soar through the heavens. The black wave ceases. Nirvana, the other shore, effortlessly is climbed. Time and again, time and again, don't miss the chance. Care for it. Be diligent. Take hold of the divine innocence and clear marriage. Thousand news arrives. Now is there. Now is not. See what is originally esteemed. Commentary: The word practicing in the sutra is simply what we understand as cultivation. As to profound, it is the opposite of superficial. Prana means wisdom, and paramita means to reach the other shore. The text says that bodhisattva. Avalokiteshvara cultivates profound, not superficial prana. What is profound and what is superficial? Profound prana is a wonderful wisdom. Superficial prana is limited to an understanding of the four truths. 
and the travelings of conditioned causation. Pratityasam Mutpada as studied in the Hinayana, the small vehicle. But only the wonderful wisdom of profound prana can cause you to actually reach the other shore. Who is it who can arrive at the other shore? Avaloki Tashvara Bodhisattva. When Shakyamuni Buddha spoke this sutra, he took special note of the great Bodhisattva Avaloki Tashvara, who practices profound prana and who has already reached the other shore. Thus, the sutra says, When Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva was practicing the profound prana paramita, those are the two vehicles, ahas and conditioned enlightened ones, are unaware of profound prana and cultivate only a superficial prana, which is concerned with the analysis of emptiness. In their contemplations, they make a very fine analysis of all form dramas and mind dramas. What are form dharmas and mind dharmas? Form dharmas are perceptible, while mind dharmas are not. To make the distinction even clearer, everything that has perceptible characteristics and is conditioned is said to possess form. Since mind dharmas are not perceptible objects, they can only be recognized as kinds of awareness. The fact that an awareness lacks by perceptible characteristics indicates that it is a mind dharma. Why that has perceptible characteristics but lacks awareness is called a form dharma. Form dharmas make up the first of the five skandhas. While feeling, cognition, formation, and consciousness, the remaining four skandhas are all mind dharmas since they lack perceptible characteristics. Therefore, when Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva was practicing the profound prana paramita, he illuminated the five skandhas and saw that they are all empty. To talk about prana is to talk about emptiness. Fundamental, there are many kinds of emptiness, but now for simplicity's sake, I will explain five basic kinds. One, insensate emptiness. This kind of emptiness lacks any knowing consciousness. It has no awareness. This emptiness, the ordinary emptiness known to most people, is called insensate emptiness because it consists merely of the emptiness we can see with our eyes and it lacks its own awareness. It is the false insensate emptiness people see in places where there is nothing at all. That lack of anything in a place is not the true emptiness. 2. The emptiness of annihilation. This is emptiness as it has been understood by those of certain external paths, none of whom understand the principle of true emptiness. They say that when people die, they cease to exist, that is, they are annihilated. And so their version of emptiness is called the emptiness of annihilation. 3. The emptiness of analyzed dramas. This emptiness is a contemplation cultivated by those of the small vehicle. They analyze form as form, mind as mind, and sort them into their constituent dramas without realizing that they are all empty. They only go so far as to say that because a perceptible characteristic can be analyzed as one of various form dramas, that because feeling, cognition, formation, and consciousness can be analyzed in terms of various mind dramas, they are empty. As a consequence, those of the two vehicles are not certified as ones who have accomplished the wonderful meaning of true emptiness. The stop of the transformation city, the enlightenment of those of the two vehicles, Ahas and Pratyaka Buddhas, is compared to a city conjured up by magic that has no real existence.